We're ready, everybody. Welcome. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is December 13th, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, and this is the journey, which is part of our international call that's focused on equipping. We are in week 10 of 10. It's our final week in which we are going through the book Unleashed by our very own Susan Rao, which is a book about the importance of unleashing corporate prayer in the church. And for this hour, we're going to be focused on chapter 10, which is entitled The Return, Watch and Pray. And so, um, Susan, do you have any preliminary comments before we go into prayer and uh, have a worship song? Uh, no, let's just go into prayer and worship. Okay. Let's have, um, let us have, well, let's have Katya. Katya, you just, can you open us up in prayer and then we'll go into the worship song? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Lord God Almighty. You're almighty. And you are a holy God. You are perfect in all of your ways. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is hidden from you. You know everything and you are in control. You're the only creator and everything else is created. And we praise you for that, Father God, that you have it in your hands, everything, the whole world. And Father, we thank you that you allow us to come together here. We thank you that you drew us. We thank you, Lord, that you made us get to know you, Father God that you allowed us to get uh, to know the truth, Father God, about you and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come together as a body, spread over all the world, Father God, to come together now here. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy by which only we can stand. Holy Spirit, we invite you to this meeting. We welcome you. We welcome you. Minister to us and help us to know what to discuss, Father God. Guide us and lead us in this one hour that we have. Precious is the time, but we love you, Lord, and we come before you with all that we have. We love you, Father God, in your glorious and gracious name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katya. All right. Lord, we just hail your arrival uh, on this earth. And um, we're just so thankful, <clears throat> Lord. And we're so thankful not only for your arrival, but for your death and resurrection and the fact that we can call on you at any time, day or night, and you answer us. And uh, that we are yours and we belong to you. And um, we're your children. And we're so thankful for it. It's the reason why we're gathered here tonight or today. So we just say thank you, Lord. Yep. And all God's people said, amen. All right. So Susan, tell us about chapter 10. Give us, uh, give us your words of wisdom. You have to unmute yourself. One of the things that I want to do is we're going to try to do that tonight is to bring all, all the loose ends together <laughs> of what is the big picture that God's unfolding here and why is why would you know a book on corporate prayer have anything to do with a watch and what does it have to do with the house of prayer and uh, I just want to make it very clear that corporate prayer I believe is the birthplace is the birthplace um, of many things. And it's the watchman who is watching over God's word to perform it. And Jesus said his house would be a house of prayer for all nations. It, it is to be a corporate place, a community place to land, to seek the Lord, to glorify him, to worship him and to meet as a community. That's what a house of prayer is. And what the church um, is ultimately destined to be, I believe. But God is raising up watchmen now to bring, restore uh, the, those ancient truths. And part of this whole thing is that the corporate prayer expression, which is we're exposing is, is somewhat lacking <laughs> in today's church. We're being called as a company of people to bring this back forward into the eyes of the church again, to bring corporate prayer expression, because I believe the corporate prayer expression is really the birthplace of what the watchmen are all about. It's the birthplace of seeing God's purposes come to, uh, to be. 
where we can declare his word and come into agreement and uh, get out in front of the enemy and make way, bring the breakthrough. So corporate prayer and the watch go hand in hand. It's today we are being called as watchmen to be restore the corporate prayer expression in our churches and to build it up if it is if it's there, but it's also a birthplace for ongoing watchmen building up the watch across the nation. This our, our elevator speech is local from local expressions to global connections. We each have our local expression, which we'll speak into tonight, but we also have a responsibility to build up the global expression or a global connection that Isaiah 52, eight summarizes. Your watchmen shall raise up their voices. They shall sing together and they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. And I believe we are in those preparatory phases where God is actually waking up the church. I don't know if you've been looking at the news headlines this week, but here in America, we've had some <laughs> crazy, crazy things happen. Um, just it, within the last month, we've had these atmospheric rivers hit the West Coast in Northern Canada or Western Canada and northern northwestern United States, massive rain uh, in, in drought drought stricken areas. Actually, we're thankful for all the rain, but it's it's coming in torrents now. And just this weekend, uh, across six of our southeastern states, there were 50, five zero tornadoes, and uh, one completely demolishing a little town in Kentucky. Um, right now, there's probably, uh, I believe there's 70 confirmed dead and many more expected. Um, off the coast of Portland, there's an earthquake storm of 90 earthquakes <laughs> recorded in a three-day period of time. And they were not small. They were like 5.0s and 4.0s. So um, I, I don't want to point to the devastation. I want to point to the fact that God is trying to wait, get our attention. <laughs> He's a wake up, get the watchman on the wall. The, these days are upon us where there's a, going to be great shakings and the darkness is going to be before us. But the news is, the good news is that God has called us to let our light shine. So shine. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And Isaiah 61 and 1 and 2 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, church. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and a deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Well, I was at the gym working out today and I was thinking, God, what, what are you doing in the midst of this? And I really felt strongly that he said, I am, I'm raising up my church. And this is an hour in the midst of all this devastation for the church to shine. And I was watching, you know, the, the monitors uh, in front of me and NBC, which is not, none of our news stations, are, I, you know, are, I find very trustworthy right now. But anyway, you know what they were broadcasting? They were broadcasting a church service and people speaking hope and about the Bible and praying over the national news. And I thought, God, you're allowing your church to be that beacon of light in the midst of all this, this crazy stuff. Let's just um, um, build up the watch. Well, the, the, in, in a watch, there's the individual, there's the um, corporate, and there's the end time call. Yeah. Right. And so would you please explain those? Yeah. Um, well, what I was going to do, Susan, was just um, just try to emphasize the um, the that corporate prayer is one of the essential building blocks of the watch. And we have the individual call, we have the the corporate call, and we have the end time call. Those are all in the chapter today. I don't think we need to go through each one of them, but 
that pointing us all around to the big picture, we have to understand that um, uh, this, without corporate prayer, you don't have a watch. And God is calling us to watch and pray together corporately. And this is within our city, within our nation, and internationally between nations. Um, it's absolutely essential that we take what we've learned through studying this book, Unleashed, and put it into practice. And um, many of us are already doing that. But I think that the Lord wants us to ramp things up to the next level um, and to commit to one of two things as 2022 approaches, uh, that either we would join or strengthen an existing watch in addition to this one, the international call, or God may be prompting us to start a watch that does not now exist. So as we're getting ready to go into breakout sessions, let me put the questions in the chat here. Hang on one second. So here are the questions for the breakout session. Uh, seek the Lord, how he's prompting you to join. How is he prompting you to join or help strengthen an existing watch? Or is he calling you to start a new watch that does not now exist? And can you make a commitment to this by the end of 2021 for 2022? You need to commit only as the Lord leads you. But my suspicion is that the Lord is speaking, has been speaking to you, to many of you, in terms of what, where your things are at with the watch. You're, every one of you has a very important role in the kingdom. And, uh, and it's no accident that you're part of this group, that you're part of the international call, and that you've been part of the journey. And so I think in the breakout sessions, we just need to talk about that. What's the Lord saying to you? Where is he prompting you? And, um, and then how can, how can we go forward in that? So um, Sue, are we ready to go Not into quite. a breakout session? Not quite. I'm, I'm still working on getting people into rooms. OK. All right. Does um, let us go to then let's just go to Sheldon Kidwell. Sheldon, can you unmute yourself and um, are you there? I'm looking for you. Yes, I am here. Roll call. I'm here. <laughs> okay, Sheldon, give us give us um, just to just prompt us as to. What the Lord's speaking to you about 2022? Just a, just a brief thing about where He's, where you feel like He's He's prompting you to expand on all the things that you've grown and started in 2021. Yeah, I, I think I think if we're honest at this stage, I'm still trying to understand 2021, uh, what <laughs> uh, has has taken place. Um, you know, I you know I feel you know over the years God's theme is often. It's not like closed off, you know, this is what he said for 2021 and then we forget it and then we do something new for 2022. Right. I believe the rollover into 2022 is going to be a very big transition over into, into what God is saying, but a lot of rollover of what he's taught us in the last kind of two years, you know, and, uh, you know, this whole watch, pray watch thing that has just been such a central figure this year. I said to the church yesterday, I said, if, if we had a PowerPoint and we were thinking of everything we're going to do next year and you can have all these words and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, we're going to do this, guys, it's going to be one thing we're going to do next year and get right is prayer watches. And, and I think there's a simplifying of our walking into what God has called us to do, because if we're honest, we have all overcomplicated stuff with programs and trying to market church and trying to do stuff like that. And Lord is bringing us back to the simplicity of being before him as a corporate body. And two things that he's really spoken to me over the last few months has been, you know, of the, of the, um, the, the 12 spies that went out and uh, the 10, 10 report, you know, what report do we give to people as, as those who are watching? See, they went out to watch and look, what report are we gonna give back? And I think that is crucial because many of our reports are the narrative of the media and then God's been whispering to me for a few months and I ignored it for a while that a line that kept coming through me was sin in the camp, sin in the camp. And I was, I was avoiding it in a way because I was like, I really didn't feel like unleashing and opening 
a can of worms in what I thought was my leadership team. And like, God, really, like really sitting in the camp. I don't, I don't have the energy to deal with that stuff right now. So I've kind of ignored it. But in the last few weeks, he just kind of just nudged me, which well, I thought should have been obvious in the beginning, just go to the Bible and see what it says about sin in the camp. <laughs> and uh, it's the story of Joshua and that Akan guy who steals some of the spoil. And, and it wasn't a moral failure. He was disobedient and, and his motivation was selfish. He was after his own agenda and he was doing things for his own gain. And I felt God say very strongly going forward, it's not about our own gain and our selfish endeavors that the Lord is going to do and he's going to expose, he's going to continue exposing selfish motives and hearts because his church is his, not ours, that we use for our gain and ministry exposure, but he's aligning hearts. And I feel that is a very big rollover for me into 2022. Um, and uh, those are key factors because God is, God is looking at the hearts of his people. That's what's taking place through the start season. He's seeing those who he can strengthen and who who he can you know use in this in this time that's thing so yeah awesome <laughs> wow thanks sheldon that's great um susan are we ready yeah uh we are ready ready okay i just, I, I just want to make it clear uh, fred to tonight that um there's a continuum of what we're talking about but the global watch is a call to community in prayer. And um, a house of prayer is actually a community of prayer. So there's a continuum of all these terms, but the call to watch is uh, really, I believe God is accentuating it now in these days as we see these things, like I tried to explain before what we're seeing in America, as we see, see these things unfold, it's extremely important for us to take what God has said in his word and actually see it have, make, make it a, a reality for us. And for, I would believe God's coming for a ready and awakened bride and she's gonna be so awake and alert and watching and that that's what's happening right now. There's everything that's gonna be shake, can be shaken is gonna be shaken. Don't be surprised at what happens. But I want to encourage everyone, be strong and of good courage because God is in it all. He will have the victory. We will have the victory. But we just need to, we need to understand that um, we, we have our own pri private walk with the Lord. That's, nobody's taking that away. But it's time for us to really understand that this corporate expression is really the birthplace of humanity and self. When God told us to tend and keep our garden, he said to watch over your garden. Yeah, amen. So amen. here we are, we're watching amen. over the garden. Amen. Okay. So, so um, let, me just, let me just reframe the, the questions here and just try to simplify it. Based on your reading and your studying the book over the last 10 weeks, how is the Lord prompting you in terms of the watch? For the next for the next season for the next year for 2022 that's probably the best the simplest way to way to put this so what is he what is he what is he calling you to and how is he calling you so go ahead With, and sue. yeah in other words we don't want this book to be set aside uh, what's in this book what we're talking about to be set aside and put it into your bookshelf it's a call to action okay all right, let's go, go ahead and just put us into the... Okay, um, there you go. All right. Looks like everybody made it back through cyberspace and uh, it's all good. So let us go. We need to have a, a spokesperson for each room. So um, let us start with room one can you unmute yourself your spokesperson for room one and uh tell us give us a couple of highlights of your uh time in the breakout session okay i had room we had room one and there was a lot of discussion about 
um, continuing or starting family prayer groups, whether that be praying with family, both sides of the family, or praying for families and marriages specifically. Um, and there's a lot of people who are already so committed and so involved to um, prayer groups for their cities, for um, the nation of Israel, um, for their churches. Um, but there's the suggestion to get more involvement for youth and young adults. Um, so that's the commitment. Um, and really to just ask Holy Spirit what to pray for, because sometimes it's just a lot to pray for. Um, and um, uh, also with this, there's different schools of ministry around churches and again, geared towards youth and young adults. Um, and to just continue with that regular intercession. And we also had someone who's more committed to um, raising even just prayer groups with uh, students at a college. Oh, their group. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Great. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Um, let's go on to room two. Room two, spokesperson, can you unmute yourself and give us a couple of highlights? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I want to share something. Um, as for what the Lord started in 2021, and that will strain in 2022, I want to share something. I, I remember a dream that the Lord told me and say, here you are told half an hour before the sand rain. This refers to events that will happen in the Middle East in, in the end times. I shared this dream in a meeting at the Global Watch several months ago. Now that I look back, the Lord had been talking to me about praying for Israel and talking into um, the Jewish uh, holidays and their spiritual message in, in these times. And in September 2022, 21, uh, I felt uh, dedicated one day a week in the Latin watch, pray for Israel. And that was very strong for me. And when I had the confirmation, uh, we started um, one month, month ago and we do it uh, every Friday. Uh, we are learning the Lord, um, and the Lord is, is, is start instructing us uh, because the truth is that Latin Watch, every Friday we um, pray for Israel, and the truth is that there is no teaching that lead us to focus on Israel here in, in Latin America and face it with this need. Now we have practically an uh, Israel watch in Spanish it, within in Latin watch. And we are talking a small steps as the Lord guides us to pray. To pray. And this is uh, related to the call of Isaiah 62, 6, and to watch and pray for Latin America, to connect spiritually with Israel. And uh, regarding the new for 2022, uh, well, the Lord uh, has been touching hearts. Um, one person say, why um, and is there no uh, watch in my country? And I say, oh, well, it is a question that the Lord calls and the person accepts the challenge to leave that space. And now uh, that person is praying for the Lord to guide him and confirm him. Um, so we are waiting and there was also, oh, and in other meeting, um, I felt pray for um, watch for the children in Latin America. And I felt, um, I, I felt in my mind, in my heart, one person, but I, I didn't say the name and I pray for that. And the next day, uh, that person uh, made me a question and, and she said to me, oh, Cynthia, um, you, you are thinking, are you thinking on me when you pray for, for that uh, um, watch? And I say, oh, I think exactly you. And we laugh 
and now she is uh, she say oh i know it's it's me but i pray for the guide of the lord and that um prepare prepare me for that and that in the lord's time and okay we are waiting we are waiting for what is the lord um arising um 2022 thank well, you that's great cynthia that, that's we great from the lord and getting confirmation on this and he's really prompting you that that uh that desire to take one day a week and from the latin watch and pray for israel is just that's really terrific um it's just, my heart just is uh leaping when i hear that so that's great thank you Sharon. three breakout room three can you uh unmute yourself and um share with us a couple of highlights from your breakout session yeah i think that's going to be down to me fred because uh, we forgot to appoint somebody <laughs> yeah, to feedback so uh Dai was taking notes, so I'll, uh, I'll just give you some points from it. I think one of the encouraging things we had is that people are listening um, to what Lord is saying to them. Uh, they're, wow. seeking, they're seeking the way forward, and um, there were lots of, of examples of people taking action, both locally uh, and on the watches on Global Watch. Um, we heard that there's the usual problems in finding those locally who are interested in prayer, who are genuinely interested in prayer, although you hear people say they are, and then, of course, a lack of commitment. Okay. But it was good that we were seeing that everybody is proactive in what they're doing, um, both locally and globally. And uh, also good to hear that, um, like ourselves, um, others have been greatly encouraged by the Global Watch, where things locally have been difficult um, trying to find prayer partners, et cetera, get prayer groups going. Um, the Global Watch is sustaining a lot of us. So bless you, Sue and Fred, that's really making a difference um, for us. And uh, I think just the other point was that um, people's eyes are being opened to what's going on locally. We had a number of, of reports back of people thinking about prayer is needed here. Maybe you know we could um, get a specific group praying about our neighborhood, um, things that they're involved in. So it's obvious from what we heard that people are listening. They're, they're looking and they're listening. They're listening to God and they're listening to what's going on around them. Okay. And I think that's really critical that we uh, listen and partner with what God is doing, not try and create things ourselves, but partner with what God is creating in our local areas. And uh, hopefully that's going to add to the global watches as well as more people are are brought in, are drawn into what we're doing, and there'll be more people on the watches and more watches beginning in 2022. Mm -hmm. So bless you, Fred and Sue. Thanks for what you're doing. Keep doing it. Thank you. That's that's very encouraging that people are listening and they're being proactive. And uh, that's really important. And it's just, it is important. This is important for people to listen. It's important for people to, you know, not do something because it's a program or because we say it, but to do something because the Lord is, the Lord's leading them. But then when the Lord leads you, then the, the important step is that you have to be obedient and obey him. That's the, that's the hard part. Because you know, when the Lord calls you to something, you, uh, you have a life gets simple, then you have a choice, either you obey him or you don't. And if you don't obey him, you can't really call him Lord. So it's, uh, uh, it's not necessarily easy, but it's, it's, it's not complicated either. Um, okay, so let's go on to room four. Room four spokesperson, would you like to unmute yourself and uh, tell us, give us a couple highlights. Hi, this is Shanta. Shanta. Hi, this is Shanta for group four. Great. We had Adam from Germany say that he loved praying together with everyone. And Gail said that she's on the California watch every day and the LGBT she started. And she gave the book to her rabbi, Sue's book, thinking that he may not read it, but he did. And he is going to read it with his men's group now. They're going to read it together, she said. So that has been such a blessing, a rabbi uh, reading the book with, the, with his men, uh, men's group. Then awesome. Frederick said they have started house to house prayer meeting 
and um, and he hopes that this will grow and they're praying together in each home. So that has been wonderful. Margaret said, um, it is so good to connect with everyone and to share uh, what she hears uh, and to share the gospel. Like you said, it's to make disciples. That's what the Lord wants, hear and make disciples. And uh, Wendy said she's waiting on the Lord to see what he has for her. And uh, Roberta said that uh, Global Watch has been such a blessing. And uh, she, uh, you're connected with so many. You're really connected with the world. And um, Ruth also said that she prays that the prayer will go on. And uh, from my side, I said that uh, getting the news one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one from people from every part of the world has opened our eyes to so much that's happening, not through the media, but through the people that we meet and pray with. And this has made the prayer group grow and they've made their eyes to open, not only with their local needs, but the needs of the world. So Global Watch has been tremendous in opening the eyes of the group and uh, we bless you Sue and uh, Fred, thank you so much. Great, thank you. That's a great report. Thank you, Shanta. All right, let's go on to room five. Spokesperson, can you just unmute yourself and give us a couple of highlights? Hello, yes. Um, for room five, we actually wanted to stop and pray to bless you and dear Susan. I thank God for you in all that you're doing to really stand in the middle of all of this and really felt great compassion for all the trials that are happening in America and all the challenges and really wanted to say thank you and pray for the Lord to really strengthen and bless you and refresh you both. And then we pray that for all everyone involved in it all and that the Lord would get, take us all from strength to strength. We also um, had a various discussion about different sizes of nations. So we had a dear sister from Singapore who was um, concerned that the little places would be included in the Global Watch, but then the logistics, because like there's so many different corporate prayer things going on already in Singapore, many people sort of start but fall out. And just to how to navigate those challenges and to keep people committed and on track. Um, now another precious sister really prayed for the strengthening, I think, of those who are wanting to do things, to really hear clearly what God's um, calling was, and how to persevere and see these things flourish and then be connected more into the global watch. Also, when she was praying, got a real sense that perhaps we need to pray for sons and daughters in the spirit. Romans 8 14 I think the sons of God who walk by the spirit and that they are the ones who would truly walk in the adoption and be the inheritors those who can stand and walk in the promises because many start and want to pray and they've got a real burden but they're still in slavery and orphanhood and they can't stand in the middle of the battle so that was a, a real passion actually God's put in my heart that I think I have to take away from this to to really pray for those who would be willing to come into that place of true surrender for Christ to really live his life in and through us and to pray through us so where yeah. we've done yeah. well we'll stay standing and not get discouraged and fall away in Jesus name amen that's a great report Hillary thank you thank you for praying for Susan and me we, uh, we need all the prayers we can get, but it is also <laughs> our honor. It is an honor every time we get on the calls to be with you. And uh, it's, just a, it's just thrilling to us because we see God's hand at work in each one of you individually and then uh, also corporately. And God's doing amazing things in it, this hour. Um, let's go on. Yes, let's go on to room six, last but not least. Yeah, we had a very powerful group. Uh, there were all the people who I actually was so glad to be with because they can um, really help um, in the situation that I explained earlier on. Um, there seemed to be um, an understanding that um, houses of prayer, of course, are the, the most uh, 
amazing things to have and that's what i've been trying to do in um, in our area and now of course it seems like a house of cards just falling down because the very people who are so committed to prayer are the ones who have been attacked attacked but then uh, something came out which was very interesting to me I've, I've never really studied it too much and that the twin witches the witches are praying for pastors to commit adultery and that it's only the prayer shield that we put around um, our pastors that are going to keep them from that um, pitfall um, which is always there um, and um, and I know there's only been a few of us who've really been standing uh, in that way and um, and so for our own sake our, <laughs> we need to ramp that up so just a warning for everybody to make sure and, and I know for myself and uh, I think uh, Sheldon also mentioned the same thing that whenever I step out, um, it's my family in, um, uh, in Joburg who are, I'm, I'm down here on the coast, but uh, I step out and they're the ones I always have to be praying for because uh, Satan seems to come against uh, things there. So um, yeah, we we I really feel that this thing of, of praying for the pastors is very, very important. And that, um, that we all have a role and really the global watch has been like the cement, uh, certainly for me, to actually realize, uh, and I think for all of us, um, uh, to actually keep us focused on what the whole, the whole thing is about, and and it's definitely to uh, create houses of prayer in every place. Um, I just know that this book has meant so much to me, and corporate prayer is so important, and, and yet it's the hardest thing to get the church to understand, and, and I suppose we just have to do it one. One person at a time. I don't know if that's if that sums it up. Jenny, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to say, please do say it. Thank you. No, I, that was excellent. I think what we were looking at to sum it up is that Sue in the book, all that she's saying in the book is that this need for the corporate prayer uh, in the church. And when that corporate prayer is not there, the enemy is getting into the church. And so... This is, you know, that's the proof of it. No corporate prayer and the enemy gets in. And I just briefly mentioned that uh, quite some years ago in Australia, uh, a key witch um, from Queensland came to the Lord and revealed that they had been cursing with uh, voodoo dolls and all sorts of things, the pastors around Australia to commit adultery. And what she said was true because there was a whole lot of pastors over four or five years that were key pastors falling to adultery and she said she couldn't get into one of our churches in Adelaide because the doesn't matter how much they were cursing they couldn't get through the prayer shield of the pastor's wife and the prayer group and wow. that really spoke to me and that's what Sue's book is about that's why we need to get this book out across the churches as much as we can so that pastors understand the importance of prayer is to protect them and their vision and their calling. Thanks. Wow, that's well, an amazing testimony, uh, Jenny. Amazing testimony. Boy, if that doesn't if that doesn't uh, just give you chills and just show you how important prayer is when the enemy is trying to pray and say I, we can't get through because there's a prayer shield. I mean that just that really says it all. So wow. Um, Susan, do you have any uh, any last minute words you want to say to wrap things up? And then we're gonna, and then actually we're going to have Jenny. We're going to have you close us off in prayer. But Sue, go ahead and just uh, just uh, give us some last minute uh, comments. Well, what uh, you guys are all saying is so encouraging. I want to thank you so much for sticking through these ten weeks. This is the last journey uh, session of the year, but um, we will continue the journey next year. It, the journey is all about discipling the watchmen to help strengthen us, to help us per persevere on the wall. Um, <clears throat> we are gonna uh, start up again uh, for the journey January 2nd. We'll continue through this week. Friday will be the last Shabbat of the year. And then we'll have a two week, uh, period of time where we can just enjoy our family and friends. I hope we can put to practice <laughs> uh, getting our, our peoples together and um, praying together and, and worshiping together, just uh, building that sense of relationship in our local communities. 
And so anyway, um, we'll start up again January 2nd and the Indigenous Peoples Watch is going to launch 2022 for us. And there is a lineup of speakers coming in for the first three weeks where we're gonna really focus on Isaiah 64. If you want to read more about it, you can read it online. There's a, there's a page on the, web, the Global Watch website about the um, um, Ren the Heavens initiative in the first three weeks of January. Um, but I'm really excited about what uh, God is unfolding. But I want to encourage all of you that this is not a book to put back on your shelf. I hope it, it impacted your heart to carry this forward. And Jenny, thank you for that exhortation to take this book and run <laughs> now. And um, I, you, we are available to talk, to help you in any way, shape or form and how this might look for your local expression, whether it's just a friend or two getting together and going through the book or and applying its principles and building relationships within your own church community, or just handing this book to your pastor like uh, Gail did for her rabbi. That's such an amazing testimony to have a messianic community now reading this book. They, we can learn a lot from them, I believe. So anyway, um, my exhortation tonight is to nourish the root system that has, has started in 2021 and carry it into 2022. Um, this Friday, Shabbat, Fred and I will be uh, talking a little bit and re the, uh, the year in review and what we see going forward. So. Um, I want to thank you. You are the Gideon's army. <laughs> you are the ones that will not relent. And we are so thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for your uh, sticking through this and being willing to go through this report or this book. Um, I do want to say that if you want to take your copy into your local Christian bookstore, if you have them, and just say, you know, you've read this book and you like it, um, it is now on um, Ingram Sparks, uh, um, I don't know, their, their catalog. It, that's what many of the Christian bookstores order their books out of. It is now on that. It's available to Christian bookstores everywhere. So if that would help us get the, the word out. The big thrust right now is to, for you to be vision carriers and to Ask God how he, you can spread this uh, vision to your local church body and to your community. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say, except to say a huge thank you. Thank you for your uh, persistence and interest in this subject. Uh, I believe God's uncovering something that's on his heart. And I know that he is with us and greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And I'm not surprised at the, ta the attacks, um, but be strong enough with courage. And we're gonna still be in relationship even when we take two weeks off. So we can e email each other, hey, I need some prayer <laughs> on this situation. So um, we're not just dropping the ball. It's just taking a time to rest and getting some things in order that need to get in order for next year. And the first three weeks I think are gonna be really strong and important for us to engage with. Yes, they are. And I, I just want to highlight also, I'm very stirred by, um, by the report from uh, our sister in uh, Toronto. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Ilem or Ilem, um, about, uh, about, uh, pray, about getting young adults involved. And we really would love to get young adults more involved in the, in the international calls here. So, and in the watch. So, um, so we're, we're, commissioning you in Yeshua's name to, um, to stir up some young adults that you know and, uh, and just and bring them in and, uh, and because we must be uh, equipping the next generation. So, um, and yes, and thank you all. We love you. Susan and I are so thankful for each one of you. And this has been, I think, the best year of our ministry uh, just in every way so far. And I think next year is going to be even better. So Jenny, let's turn it over to you. You can go ahead and close us off in prayer. Thanks. If I could just mention to the Australians, uh, we've sent a copy of Unleashed to Kurong Books. 
uh, in Sydney. And uh, please join us in prayer that they will take this book because that will go into their stores all across our nation. And uh, so we, we sent it with a high recommendation. So watch this space. Uh, so Father, look, we thank you so much, Papa God. You've been with us on the journey and you are the journey. We've been journeying with you and you have been giving us revelatory truth over the last 10 weeks, Lord, all that you've sown into us. Father, it's just been a complete treasure trove. And we thank you. You are equipping us as watchmen around the nations. Every single one of us, Lord, um, there is nobody that you have not been helping, teaching, training and anointing and preparing for the day that's coming. Uh, we're looking forward to next year, Father, journeying on with you through the Global Watch. And Father, what a blessing we pray on Fred and Sue. Uh, as Lord, they have just really opened this up to the world. And uh, you are so with them and you're leading them and guiding them and giving them wisdom. Father, we do pray uh, a blessing on everybody over this uh, holiday season, Lord, may it be a rich time uh, celebrating the birth of Christ, uh, his death and his resurrection, that he now sits at the right hand of the Father ever interceding for us. We thank you, Father, may it be a wonderful time with family and a wonderful time in our church communities, Father, and just a wonderful one-on-one -on -one time with you. That we all get time to just set aside from all the busyness of life and to just have time with you and be refreshed spiritually, physically for the year ahead. And we, Lord, we look forward to coming together. We're a family and we look forward to reconnecting in the new year. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All God's people said, amen. Everybody on YouTube. Amen. 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 Amen.